So this is the funnel that we will be taking people to. I want to walk you through the funnel, why we're using this as our uh, landing page for the ad, um, and then what's going to happen when people visit the funnel. So this is our squeeze page. We are celebrating that my podcast has been live for six months. So that's why we're doing this fun giveaway. We're giving away a $200 Best Buy gift card. I wanna show you what we built here. So we're gonna pick one random winner on July 30th. So this will go for about six weeks. Everybody who enters in um, is going to be getting some other uh, fun freebies as well. So even if they don't win the $200 gift card, um, they're gonna get some free stuff from us. So um, I have up here uh, just a header that says fun giveaway. I clearly explained what it is that's going on. And then inside the pop-up, that's where they enter their information. I get their name, their email, phone. And then I ask for their company name and website. It's not required to enter in. One of the things that we've done over here at the Branding Group that you'll see is we have um, been very um, intentional about testing everything on mobile. We are a, what we call a mobile first marketing agency. In other words, we test everything on mobile before we ever look at it on a desktop because it's important that um, for us, what we're seeing is about 80% of people that visit our ads are visiting from mobile. So um, it is, uh, it's just so important for us to look at that first because it's fun to look at the desktop because it's bigger, but only 20% of the people taking uh, action on our ads will ever see the desktop version of the funnel. So this is step one. Um, this is what they'll see when they first get here. That pop-up will automatically pop up five seconds after they've loaded the page, even if they don't click, yes, I wanna win. Our numbers for opt-ins have increased dramatically when we have that pop-up show up. Then they're taken to what I call the qualifying question. This helps me determine whether or not the person entering is a good lead right now. And so we take them down a very quick survey funnel that they can finish in about 10 seconds or less. The answer is they ask a couple yes or no questions. The reason I'm doing this is so that when I do reach out to them, then I know how I can serve them or if I can serve them at all, if they're a good fit. So um, this is a survey element in ClickFunnels. What this is, is I'm able to ask, I have a quick header that says, what's your biggest struggle in business right now? And I'm not gonna show you all the questions, but I'll show you the power behind this. If they answer lead generation, then it just takes them to the next question. If they answer follow-up, then it skips down to another part of the survey. And if they answer revenue, it skips down to another part of the survey. Let me show you. So if they, uh, if they said lead gen, then I asked them these three yes or no questions. Are you running ads? Do you have an AdWords campaign? What's your current marketing budget? These are all um, yeah, multiple choice questions. If they answered follow up, it skips down to here with, for these yes or no questions. Are you using an autoresponder? Do you have a text messaging system? And then I asked what software. Finally, if they chose revenue, then it skips down here and it asks a couple of yes or no questions. So that's all stored within their customer record so that I'm able to figure out how I can serve them. Um, we have run a lot of giveaway campaigns for clients and we have figured out that if we ask some very simple yes or no questions after they enter into win, they will usually fill it out. We get about a 70 to 80% rate of fill in. And now we're able to take the people that may just be looking for a prize and we bring them into our marketing funnel and we figure out how we're able to serve them. Now, so there's strategy behind the thank you page as well. Check that out. So again, we are a mobile first, um, we're a mobile first agency here. So um, what we wanna do here is we're asking specifically for um, on the thank you page, we let them know that they've, they're successfully entered to win, so their job is done now. Um, and then we ask them if they want to share um, for another chance to win. So uh, let me show you what I mean by that. So here we have used the ClickFunnels element so they can just click a button and share it. And then 
right here we have quotes. Have you noticed that we have little quotes following everywhere? This is all about building trust and rapport. We're doing it, we're doing it pretty subtly. It's on the bottom of every single page. On the landing page, there's a quote. On the survey page, there's a quote. And then here, there's also a quote. These are all quotes from clients that have been left on our Facebook page. And we're, we're saying here, get five more entries by sharing it. I really want the people that come through this to share it so that I get more free traffic. Um, and then at the very bottom, we have an Are You a Reader? Here's my favorite books. So they can grab some more free stuff if they want. So now let me show you what it looks like on mobile. It looks very different. And there's a couple of things that have just been completely chopped off. Um, I have my photo there. We still have the same header. And then there's the get five more entries. But I do not show any of the other um, books there, any of the other freebies, because it doesn't, just doesn't look good on mobile. So we completely scrapped them. So that's what the funnel is. That's how we're bringing people in. Now, when they enter in on the squeeze page within ClickFunnels, what I'm doing is underneath the automation, I am adding them in to a separate email list so that I can figure out who has come in. So this is the automation that I've attached to the funnel. I have them added to a specific list here, the Best Buy July GFS or Giveaway Funnel System. Within ClickFunnels, I have an action funnel set up. An action funnel is a series of steps that takes place when people are first signed in to a giveaway. So let me show you what we created here for the um, Best Buy. So let me, uh, let me find my funnel here. I think it's on the next page. Do, 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 do. Real estate, okay, let me go back. What did I call the latest one? Let's see here. Course building, that's not it, that's not it. I will come back to it. I wanna say it's, oh, here we go, the GFS intro sequence. That took me too long. All right, so once they're added into that specific list, here are the actions that take place. They are immediately added to my general mailing list. They are sent an email intro right away saying thank you for entering in. Notice it's sent out immediately. It's a very simple message. It just says, hey, I'll be picking the winner. Check out my podcast. A text message is sent an hour after they've entered in. The text message reads, hey, this is Alex. Thank you for entering the gift card contest. Good luck. The reason I do that is because it's so important to create that. If they entered in, then I want them to hear from me across all the different communication methods. And that's a very simple one. 24 hours after they've entered in, I send them a bonus gift. I have a fun little email in here where I actually send them two things. And then two hours after the first bonus gift email, I send another one with another freebie. Now this freebie is actually an affiliate offer. It's a free book by my business coach, Eric Lawful. And I, um, so anytime they enter in here, I now have another lead in his system, so it helps me there. And then I have a invite to my Facebook group. And so um, I talk about how the Facebook is negative, but my group is positive, and I give them an invite to join. Five days after they've registered to opt into my funnel, I send an email asking how I can help them and be of service with a link so they can schedule a free strategy session. And then I tell them about on day seven, I tell them about the giveaway funnel system and why it works. And basically I just described the process they went through. And then 10 days afterwards, so this is all automated, 10 days afterwards I introduce them to a client of mine named Cheryl. I tell the story about how I was able to help her. And then I invite them uh, to join a program of mine for free. So that way they can see what I'm all about. And again, it's all about building that relationship. So that's the funnel. That is the um, intro sequence that we created. And um, so that now you can see the funnel and the follow-up. You can get some ideas on how we did it. Everything we do is mobile first. So let me go back to the funnel there. Um, and I'm going to copy that URL because we're about to go now and actually jump into the ads manager and create the ad. So um, 
super excited about this. I'm also going to show you the graphics that I've created. I'm going to show you um, the copy that we have. You're going to see all of it. So within ClickFunnels, I just click here and I can copy the URL to the clipboard. So we're good. Now I'm going to go here and we're actually going to create the campaign. So I'm going to click on um, just create a campaign. Now what I'm going to do is there's a lot of different things that you can um, do here. And I want to go over this super briefly. Um, my marketing objective determines how Facebook helps me. So for example, if I'm going for brand awareness or reach, then they are going to try to get my ad in front of as many people as possible, irregardless of how those people respond to the ad. In other words, they don't care if they take action on the ad. They're just trying to get it seen by as many people as possible. The other ones, traffic. This is what I'm going to use for my giveaway funnel. I want Facebook to identify who is clicking on my ad and going to my landing page and filling it out. I want them to find people that are showing those tendencies. Now there's other ones here. If I wanted engagement, in other words, if I just wanted people to like or comment, um, then Facebook would show my ad to people who have consistently engaged with ads, regardless of whether they've clicked on it. If they have liked or commented on the ad, then that's who, the, that's who Facebook will show the ad to. Now, then there's app installs, which doesn't apply. Video views, which I'm not using a video this time. Lead gen, this allows me to capture information without a landing page, which is really cool, but in this case, it's not a fit. Or messages, I could start a messenger campaign, which again, I'm, I want them to go to a funnel so the messages don't fit. Now, I could also, do, I could also be, um, choose conversions. Now, I'm not going to, in this case, because um, I have found that traffic gets me a lower cost per click than when I target for conversions. There could also be catalog sales, which don't fit, or store visits, which in my case don't fit. So I'm gonna choose traffic. I just wanted to explain why I'm choosing it so that when you set up your ad, you can determine the best objective. We do run a lot of video view campaigns and we run engagement campaigns, but in this case, the traffic campaign is the best fit. So I'm gonna say best buy, GFS July 30th, that's gonna be the name of my campaign so I can track it. Click on continue. Now I'm gonna, this ad set, I will be creating multiple ad sets. An ad set determines the budget and audience for the ad. So this one, I'm gonna call it AB Warm, which is Alex Branding Warm. I could also, we've also used BG Warm, in other words, people who have been following the Branding Group page, we'll call it BG Warm. Um, we have other, that's basically how we do it. So if we're targeting a specific set, which you'll see in just a moment, I'll be targeting other online marketers in just a few minutes after we set this one up. And um, I'll give that ad set name the people that I am um, trying to attract. So you'll, you'll see my naming sequence in a little bit. So now I want to go down here and I want this to only go to my custom audiences. These are um, audiences that I have created based on, I'll show you, I'll just go through it and explain how this audience has been created. So um, this is my uh, LinkedIn and ClickFunnels. This is all of the people that are on my LinkedIn and everyone that's in my ClickFunnels database. I want this to go to people who have engaged with my Instagram account in the past 60 days. I want this to, I want this to um, show up to them on Facebook. I want them, I want this to go to my Alex Branding Group contacts, the people who are in my, um, uh, who have been emailing me. I want this to go to my, um, my uh, other connections that I have. Again, this is to show them the ad on Facebook. And if they opt in, then they are now in my database. My Gmail contacts, I want that. And then I want them also for, let me scroll down here. All website traffic, I want that. So anybody who's been to my website um, in the past, I believe that's 90 days, will see my ad. Um, our blog gets a lot of traffic every single day. So this is a way for them to um, see my ad and then hopefully get into my database using this campaign. And then anybody who has watched my videos, we release a video a day. And so anybody who's watched my video more than halfway through will also be seeing um, this ad. So I have for this one, again, this is specifically for warm. That's, I created it for warm audiences. 
Um, and so I am choosing the custom audiences that are in my ad account. I am not doing any of this detailed targeting. I will do one for the next ad set. I'm not doing one now. They have automatic placements. I don't want automatic placements. I want to edit where my ad shows up. Um, there are times to just let the ad go everywhere. In this case, I want to control where it goes. So and for this ad, um, I want to make sure that it shows up in the Facebook feeds, instant articles. I don't really get good response there. I don't want it showing up in the right column and I don't want it in the marketplace. Um, for Instagram, it's not really a good fit for, well, stories. Yeah, I'm going to take that off. Um, and then for the audience network, that's cool. That means it shows up on other websites and apps that is in the Facebook um, uh, uh, network. And then I do want it showing up in Messenger for these people. So now you'll notice when I do my next ad set, and it's more towards a cold audience, I will not have it show up in Messenger because they don't know me. But for the people that are following me already, they already know who I am, and so um, it's gonna be a good fit. I'm gonna set my daily budget to $10, and I'm gonna set an end date because I don't want this showing up after the campaign is done. So I will set an end date for July 30th. Actually, I'll do it for July 29th. Um, and I'll set it to end at 9.15 p.m. So I will be spending $455 promoting my $200 gift card giveaway. I predict that this will generate approximately 200 new leads for the branding group. Out of that, we'll probably get about 20 appointments set. That's typically how it works. And then from those 20 appointments, we'll get probably about eight or nine sales. Um, and so for the 455 plus 200 for the $655, we'll generate about eight sales um, and it'll be, it'll be great. Now, later on, I may increase my daily budget um, specifically towards cold traffic if it's going well. So we will see. So I'm going to click on continue. Now I'm going to create the ad. So the ad name, um, I call it usually by what we're, um, I just, I'm just going to call it best buy and then that'll be that. So I'll just do best buy. Uh, when I create the ad, um, I want it to be a single image. I want a single image to show up because that's the, um, that's what we've created. I'm going to upload these images. Now I want to show you the images that we've created. So here's one. We created four different images for this campaign. It'll help us determine which ones work best. So I'm going to save this image on my desktop um, under, again, this one's called Best Buy 4. It helps me kind of track. Um, so that one's saved. Here's another one. Notice this has a you know, very different look and feel to it. I look a little bit more professional here. Um, it's not as fun and silly as the other one. We're still using the Best Buy gift card media here. We have a slightly different background, not as much yellow. Um, Best Buy 2, we're using the Best Buy um, store to really grab people's attention here. There is no gift card media. We're using the Best Buy store. And then my headshot is kind of floating and we're using a little bit different of a script. And then for this one here, I'm not even on it anymore. And we're using the store and then we just have text up here on the, on the side, enter to win a $200 gift card. So those are the four different graphics. And honestly, I don't know which one is going to convert best. If I had to guess, I'd say for the warm traffic, in other words, people who already know me, this one's probably gonna do really well. Now for the cold traffic, people who have never met me before, I'm gonna guess that this one or this one is going to do the best. But we'll just let the data see. So back to the ads manager we go. I'm going to upload the images here and I'm gonna attach all four. So, um, because then what it does is it'll actually create different ads for me. So um, it's gonna upload the four ads graphics. When it does that, not only is it uploading it, but it's also testing it against um, their 20% overlay rule. So let's just scroll through here. Did any of them get a little warning sign? They won't because I know that we've tested it, but um, sometimes you have to test your ads here because um, some of them will get a little yellow thing that says, hey, you got more text on here than you should have. So and you'll get a warning. Um, so now uh, we want the link type to go to a website. Um, I'm going to paste the URL. So it goes to that so now we know um, 
And then all it says right now is random winner chosen on July 30th. That's not what we want. So I have three different copies of my ad text. Here's copy number one. I am giving away a $200 Best Buy gift card to one lucky person. That's right, $200 to Best Buy using all caps to draw attention. A little emoji, all you have to do is enter in your name, email, and phone number so I can contact you if you are the lucky winner. The winner will be selected at random on July 30th. It's very important to note when you're running a giveaway on Facebook, you have to specify the absolute dollar value. I can't just say I'm giving away a gift card and I have to specify the end date. So that is very important. Um, and then the headline, you can win a $200 Best Buy gift card. Call to action. I'm gonna change this uh, to sign up. And so there we go. So that's how it looks. So now before I continue on, I wanna make sure it looks good on all the different formats. So notice here it has the ad preview. So I'm gonna go through and just go, okay, does this look good here? Notice it doesn't look good on the feature phone, which is a bummer, but um, I've noticed that almost none of my ads are seen on the quote unquote feature phone, so I'm not too concerned about that. This one looks really good on the desktop. It looks good on Instagram. See how it catches the eye right there? Now there's a big old sign up button, so that looks really good on Instagram. This is what it looks like on the audience network. So again, I think this ad is gonna do really well for people who already know me. Um, this is what it looks like if you're scrolling on a website, uh, like for example, the New York Times, you'll see my gift card. It really screams out, looks good. Again, the audience network, audience network banner. Um, I hate that this is a part of it, but I can't turn this off. So it just shows my little face here. And then um, it has this. So it's like, I'm giving away, blah, blah, blah. So this usually shows up on mobile apps, by the way. So like games and such. Um, this is what it looks like on, again, another audience network. And this is what it looks like on the messenger. So this is a really dynamic ad here. Let's show you what the other ad graphics look like. I'm not going to scroll through all 10 of the iterations, but this is what it looks like on mobile for the other ad graphic. Again, the Best Buy gift card, that uh, media really stands out, um, with my headshot. So, um, that looks good. The other one, uh, this goes to the store now. Um, really strong. It's like, you know, you're looking at a store. Um, we'll see how well this one does. I, I personally think this will be the lowest performing graphic. And if it doesn't perform well, then we turn it off. And then here's number four. This one looks really good here. Um, it kind of goes against the clouds a little bit, but having my face against the Best Buy, we think this is a really good, uh, good graphic. So I'm excited to see how this one does. I'm going to click on confirm. This is going to put the ads into review now, and then I'm going to duplicate these ads. I'm gonna create new um, graphics with different ad text. So I'm gonna click duplicate ad, try it now. And so now it takes me back to basically using the same media. Now I'm gonna select another ad text from my Word document, come back here. It's got all the ads again, so I don't need to upload the graphics. It's got the website URL, the headline, etc. So now I paste it, my other ad text. So this ad text is, how would you like it if someone gave you 200 bucks and you did nothing to earn it? I think that would be pretty awesome, don't you? Well, today is your lucky day. I'm giving away a $200 Best Buy gift card to one lucky person. And all you have to do is enter your name, email, and phone number. You don't have to do anything else. Just click here to enter. I pick a winner on July 30th, good luck. So um, very, it's, it's got a different feel to it, right, than the other one. So we do this to kind of test what works. So we started this ad with a question. And then we make them go, we make the, we, we're using imagination. Like, hey, that'd be cool. Someone gave me 200 bucks. I like that idea. So um, now I'm going to change the headline to win a $200 Best Buy gift card. The reason why I do that is because when I scroll over to some of the other audience networks now, it just says win a $200 Best Buy gift card. And so it's got a little bit of a better uh, look to it. So we'll see, see how this one, it just has win. So it's got a, um, it's easier to read. And so I have this ad copy signed up. I wanna use the sign up button. And so I'll click review. It doesn't allow me to just publish right away. It wants me to save to draft. So we'll do that. I'll click save to draft. And then 
um, it's going to ask me if I want to publish it, and I will. And so now I have four graphics with the first version of my ad text. Now I'm going to have another four graphics mixed in with my second version of my ad text. So I'm really running a lot of different tests here to see which one performs better. I'm going to publish these. And then I have a third different version of my ad text. And what's going to happen is in seven days when I look at this, I'm going to get a really good idea of the combinations that are working well. And I will um, deactivate the different ad combinations that are not giving me the return that I want. So, um, so that's why I'm, I'm doing it this way. I have 12 different iterations, which is it's just, it's gonna be a lot, but it helps. This is gonna be a six week long campaign. Plenty of time for me to see what's working and what is not working. So um, now sometimes we don't need to run this many different iterations of it. So in this case, I think it's gonna be a good thing. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna create another. I don't wanna do that. I wanna use my existing campaign. Best Buy, thank you very much. Continue. I want to use my existing ad set, so I'll select that. AB Warm, continue. And now it's going to ask me for the ad name. Again, I'll just choose Best Buy, single image. Uh, because I don't have the duplicate option, after I've already duplicated it, I kind of have to run this a little bit. It won't take me long. I just select them click, it's processing it. Now I'm going to go to my Word document, grab my last ad text. We, uh, so this is more of a celebratory. My podcast has been live for six months. Wow. To celebrate, I'm giving away a $200 gift card to Best Buy. Click below to enter to win. I'll pick a random winner on July 30th. Short and sweet. I'm going to go back to ClickFunnels and grab the URL, copy it here. I'm going to use um, a slightly different um, ad copy. Let's celebrate. And so all caps, let's see how that one works. My call to action button, I'm going to change it to sign up. And we're good to go. So I'm going to click on review. It's going to show me everything. Yes, I'm going to go with all that. Save to draft. And then it's going to take me to the publish and I'll be good to go from there. So all of that is good. Now, um, so I'm going to click on publish. Now, check this out. This is going to be super cool. Um, instead of me doing all of that a whole bunch of different times for my next audience, all I have to do is duplicate my ad set and it copies everything I just did. So I'm going to show you that in just a second when it's done publishing. And then we'll be done with the demonstration of me launching a Facebook ad campaign. It's thinking, it's thinking. All right, it published. Sweet. So I'm going to hide this window. I'm going to jump over to my ad set. Now I want this, instead of going to my warm traffic, I want this to go to cold traffic. In other words, people who have never met me before. So it's loading the duplication for the ad set. Yes, I want this. Duplicate. It's thinking, it's processing, it's got a lot of work to do. <laughs> it's taking me to the next screen where I'm gonna be able to select a different audience. So I'm gonna call this um, Russell Brunson, Ryan Dice, and Frank Kern. Those are other internet marketers. I wanna attract internet marketers into my world for this campaign um, because a lot of the offers that I'm making are gonna be beneficial to them. So um, website traffic. So I'm, I have to remove all of these custom audiences first because um, I don't want my audience to be skewed by, um, by tr them trying to squeeze my interests into these custom audiences. So um, I'm gonna keep the location as all of the United States 
and then I'm going to type in here Russell Brunson. The reason I'm choosing these, by the way, is because I've had a great success with these guys before in targeting their audience. So that's why I've chosen those three. It is not a result of me winging it. It's um, us, we have run ads for years to the audience of these three guys and they have converted the best. And so we will continue to run ads to those, um, to those three audiences. Edit placements. Now, remember what I said before, I'm not having it in Messenger, so I'm turning that off. And then I'm not gonna have it on the audience network either. So if they're cold traffic, they will only see me on Instagram and Facebook and within the newsfeed. So the um, number of impressions that I'm going to get is probably going to be lower than if I would allow for the audience network and the messenger, but um, that's okay. So, um, so I want to make sure that it's only showing up on where I have seen my cold traffic convert the best. So then I'll click on publish. And notice that it's got all the images over here. So all the ads have been copied over. So all I did was I just duplicated the ad set, copied over all of the ads. You can see here it's working on publishing. It's at 21% right now. Um, so it's working on getting all of those ads up and into the review queue. So um, I will be spending again, based on this, um, it's uh, $455 for each ad set. So it turns out to be about 900 plus my $200 Best Buy gift card, it's about $1,100. It's a pretty expensive ad campaign, but I'm anticipating, like I said, about seven or eight sales. Each sale on average for us is about $500. So um, we're looking at turning this $1,100 ad spend into roughly $4,000 of revenue for the company. If we see an uptick in the number of people that are entering in, we will always boost the budget. It's so important to do that. And if it works really well this time, we will run it again. So we've run a lot of giveaways in the past and they worked really well. Um, and so this time we are doing one celebrating six months of my podcast being live. That is what spurred on this promotion. So thank you guys for joining me today. I have loved sharing my behind the scenes look at me launching an ad campaign. I'll be sending out the recording, and as a gift, I am also including, so that you can have it, if, if you want it, I will send you my funnel that I have created. I will send you the action funnel that I created in ClickFunnels so you can have it, and you will get the Word document with my ad text and the graphics that I use so that you can have them for yourself to make similar versions of it. I will keep you posted on the success of this campaign, have a great day, everyone, and thank you so much for